After just two months on the job, Sally had become used to her new routine as a dishwasher at the restaurant. Long hours and extra effort were part of the job description on days when the restaurant had parties. Constant criticism from the owner's fiancé, though, was something she just couldn't adapt to. Monica was an egotistical woman who thought she was everything. She had an aversion to Sally from the start and actively sought out ways to embarrass her. Even though Sally couldn't have stolen the cash since she hadn't left the kitchen that day. Monica still accused her of doing it. The fact that Monica cared nothing about the facts was obvious. I'm calling you a thief and a petty liar. Monica yelled, you and others like you are perpetually seeking for opportunities to take advantage of other people. You won't believe what I'm going to tell Jonathan. You can be sure he'll fire you. Happily, Monica was preoccupied with the busy day in the restaurant and didn't have time to grumble to her fiancé. After a prosperous career in business and some well-deserved retirement, Jonathan Parker's father passed the restaurant on to him. Ben Parker continued to keep tabs on his only son after retiring and was there to offer counsel whenever asked. Since Jonathan came into this world later in his father's life, Ben had made it his mission to provide for his every need. After Ben accomplished what he set out to do, he still encouraged Jonathan to keep going. Now Ben paid close attention as Jonathan asked his dad for guidance. The restaurant is losing money, and I don't know why. Dad, in addition, the cash register has been the victim of theft. Monica informed Sally that it is the new dishwasher. I don't think she's stealing, though, because I hired her myself. Jonathan uttered a perplexed, I don't know what to do. After giving his son a good look, Ben Parker paused to think. His expression changed, and his eyes gleamed, when he finally calmed down after thinking about everything. My son, everything will work out great, but before you do that, get away from it all for a while. Going to New York for the Forum of Restaurateurs is a must. Ben proposed going because you've been wanting to for quite some time. In astonishment, Jonathan arched an eyebrow. My dad, I really want to go. But if I don't get to go, who will run the restaurant? I really don't have the funds to employ someone to do the work at the moment. And you're already retired. However, a solution had already occurred to Ben Parker. Why would it be necessary to employ any staff? Given her familiarity with the establishment and her regular patronage, Monica appears like the ideal candidate to fill in temporarily. The guy was dead serious. But Jonathan glanced at his dad and thought he was kidding. He thought it was a wonderful idea to put Monica in charge. And he meant it. Well, I'm not sure, but that could work. She may be very successful. Before going to purchase his plane tickets, Jonathan wished that nothing major would happen during his absence. Monica wept and grumbled when she found out that her fiancé was going on a business trip to New York. So. You're leaving me to run the restaurant where everyone is always trying to con me or steal from me? She asked. My absence will be brief. Just three days. My darling, apologies, but it's not the right moment to fire someone. And before you jump to conclusions, maybe Sally isn't to blame for the restaurant's troubles. Jonathan responded, as Monica strode into an adjacent room. She let out a snort. As soon as Jonathan realized the evening was over. He started getting ready for his journey. When Monica took over as manager the following morning, the restaurant underwent immediate and dramatic transformation. The quality of the meal would decline due to Monica's stringent regulations, which included requiring the servers to turn over the majority of their tips at the end of the day and having the budget for ingredients. Because they were afraid for their jobs, the employees stooped and worked. The only person who remained unchanged was Sally. She persisted in dealing with the sea of foam that ensued from washing mountains of dirty dishes. She emptied a trash bag outdoors after cleaning the initial set of dishes. An old homeless man with ravenous eyes beheld her when she drew near the garbage bin. My darling, what's in your bag? Do you happen to have some food? I haven't had any food since yesterday. The man asked with some caution. Sally felt sorry for him and shook her head in disapproval. The man's eyes clearly betrayed his anguish and disappointment. Hold on a second, sir, Sally finally said after some consideration. Something is waiting for me in the kitchen. Let me buy your lunch because I have the means to do so. Thanking her, the old guy grinned. 
Sally brought back a bowl of hot soup and some fries a short while later. Let me give you this. Don't be concerned. I covered all of the costs. She assured. They take these matters very seriously at our restaurant. She emphasized, warmly accepting the meal. The homeless man settled down to eat on the bench. What's it like to work there? The old guy inquired as Sally prepared to depart. Is the owner a good employer? I've heard that he pays very little and that his demands are exorbitant. Sally paused and said, No, that's not true. With empathy, Mr. Parker is an excellent manager and a good individual. But his fiancée is not like that at all. She looked at the clock. I apologize, sir, but I must return to my work. I'll pick up the tray later. So please leave it in the back room. With a nod, the destitute guy expressed gratitude for her generosity. When he was done, he picked up the tray and went to the rear room. Unaware of the homeless man's existence, Monica and a dashing young waiter emerged at that same moment. Monica was drawn in for an intense kiss by the waiter. Monica withdrew out of dread as her cheeks began to flush. Sam, please stay away. What happens if we're noticed? They could inform Jonathan, Monica remarked, a hint of fear in her voice. Have patience. See you later tonight. Simply act appropriately in public. The waiter was persistent, pursuing his flirtation. Would you please give me some more cash? Payday isn't coming quickly enough yet I want to get a new phone. Additionally, that idiot Jonathan is traveling for work. The homeless man heard the exchange while he was hiding behind a tree with the tray. Sam, not today, please. Jonathan has already observed that the register is missing cash. Sally, I'm going to put the blame on that dishwasher. Though he ought to have fired her long ago. That won't fix the issue. Monica added, the sound of what he heard so startled the homeless man that he dropped the tray. Making a loud clatter and making himself known, Monica turned right away and noticed the man without a home standing there. Why are you in this place? Surveillance? And why do you have a tray from our kitchen in your hands? Is the dishwasher to blame once more? Here, we have a classy restaurant, not a soup kitchen, Monica cried out, glaring scornfully at the man who was homeless. Re-entering the restaurant with a fury, Monica headed directly for the kitchen. You dirty dishwasher, you are fired, never return here again, you have an hour to pack up and head out. Monica yelled, Sally shook and gave her a beseeching look. Ma'am, please don't throw me out. With tears flowing down her cheeks, she muttered, I'm saving up for my son's surgery. Unfazed, Monica carried on with her tirade until she herself led Sally out the door. Before leaving the restaurant, Sally gave it one more glance the man she had fed earlier, who was homeless, cried out to her when she was leaving. Please, hold on a moment, what took place? Why are you crying? He said in a sympathetic tone. Sally, fighting to contain her tears, shook her head. I was let go, I made a great effort. Billy, my son, requires surgery, I am a mother by myself. Three years ago, my spouse was killed in a vehicle accident. Billy was in the rear seat at the time. And although he lived, his leg became stuck in the damaged door, causing him to hobble. The elderly man gave her a pitying glance and put a gentle hand on her shoulder. You're okay, Sally. Everything will come together in the end. Before leaving, he remarked, there are a lot of good people in this world. The man said some things. But Sally ignored them at the time and soon forgot what he had said. She had no idea that the destitute man was genuinely interested in assisting her and was motivated to find a dramatic solution to her issue. The old man went into the restaurant manager's office the following morning. What are you hoping to achieve? Monica looked up and saw the same homeless man who had been outside the day before. And she complained angrily, I'm busy, who granted you permission to storm into my office? You'll be thrown out onto the street in no time when I call security. I'm here because I own this office as well as the restaurant itself. The man said with an enigmatic smile, Ben Parker is who I am. Sweetheart, I still own this establishment. Based on all the documentation, the homeless man revealed a professional suit behind his wig and shed his rags. Shocking Monica so much that her mouth dropped open. Then he used a moist cloth to remove the makeup from his face and turned to face Monica. Yes. That was Ben Parker, he said, 
I won't let you deceive my son and steal his money. Pointing to the door, go forward and forget about him, and remember to bring your sweetie. The waiter, along, tell him he's been sacked as well. Even though Monica's face changed considerably, she hurriedly left the restaurant as he demanded. Ben Parker had told his son everything the night prior, but she had no idea. In order to get to the bottom of things, the senior businessman had purposefully orchestrated a scenario where he could assume the identity of a homeless person. Ben Parker's current goal was to put things right and get Sally back to work. On top of that, he paid for little Billy's surgery and recovery by contacting a leading facility that specializes in musculoskeletal ailments. The news that Sally could go back to the restaurant filled her with unfathomable joy. Surprisingly, the homeless man she had met beside the garbage cans turned out to be the proprietor of the eatery. However, there was more, Sally. You won't be returning to the restaurant in that capacity this time. The role of administrator will now be yours. My son and I will be here to support you as you go forward in your career. Mr. Parker added with a smile. The whole thing was genuine. Yet Sally felt like she was in a fantastical story. As soon as Jonathan got back from his business trip, he backed his dad's choice. The young entrepreneur escorted little Billy to the surgical facility the day after that. Sally remained by Billy's side during his treatment, and she never stopped giving thanks to God for sending Jonathan into their lives. They hit it off right away and became fast friends, realizing how much they enjoyed being around each other. It was premature to get too serious, but Ben Parker had a feeling they were planning a wedding. Jonathan felt his lifelong dreams coming true as he spent time with Sally and her son. Monica, however, was obsessed with money and never loved Jonathan for who he was. Billy, Sally and Jonathan's son, danced his heart out during their wedding, which took place around six months later. Rather than in a nightclub, Ben Parker's kid had found happiness with a family that had been waiting for him in the restaurant's back room. He was happy about this. After watching the first story above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. Now. Let's watch another similar story. For the previous 10 years, Larry Johnson had been living in an abandoned place. It wasn't quite his dream house, but it was better than nothing at all. Larry was regarded among the neighborhood's street people as an old hand. Having recently turned 65, he was an expert mechanic in a past life, and he could now fix any vintage machinery. From a faulty toaster spiral to an ancient clock. The homeless population in the area was well aware of Larry's abilities and frequently brought him different objects to fix. After Larry's repairs, some of the things even functioned better than they had before they broke down. Larry's skills was greatly valued by the homeless community, some even succeeded in selling the mended goods at flea fairs since they consistently gave the elderly repairman half of their earnings. The homeless folks were just untrustworthy. Work was the center of Larry's existence. He didn't focus on the past or worry about the future. He secretly wished for a different life. One free of the homeless and the foul stench of the city garbage. In contrast to the majority of the homeless, Larry was a light drinker and only took alcohol for medical purposes. His colleagues respected him for this because they saw in him the capacity to uphold his dignity and persevere in the face of adversity. An ancient TV set that Frank, a homeless man, had found in the trash was delivered to Larry one hot July morning. This one is quite old but nearly undamaged. Sighing wearily. Frank laid the hefty TV down and stated, Plasma TVs weren't even a thing when this TV was sold. Frank, what are you wanting me to do with it? I can disassemble it for parts. But I don't see much use in fixing it. I think you could sell those in the flea market. Larry said, drawing on his experience. If you agree, then our agreement is made. Take it apart. Please. And I'll make it worthwhile for you. Frank answered. 
I'll give you a bottle of whiskey and a portion of the sales proceeds. Larry laughed and slapped Frank on the back. Due to its size and age, Larry chose to disassemble the TV in front of his RV rather than carrying it around. He took off the rear cover and grimaced it in disgust. The TV was obviously not in use for a long time because a heavy coating of dust had collected on its electronic boards. Larry began sweeping up the dust with a soft bristle brush. But when he looked more closely at the TV case, he saw something strange wrapped in duct tape and cellophane in the corner. What is this, someone's secret cache? Perhaps, Larry tapped his lips. Larry picked up the bundle and felt its satisfying weight. He opened the package with a growing sense of excitement and saw several gold brooches and rings that landed with a pleasing clinking sound. Dear God! What a stroke of luck, Larry let out a happy cry. The bundle had gold jewelry as well as a thick stack of $100 bills held together with a tight elastic band. Larry's heart raced upon seeing so many things in cash. Larry's mind was soon racing with ideas about how to make the most of his unexpected wealth. Knowing that Frank had not been completely honest when splitting the proceeds from the equipment sales, frequently keeping the majority of the money and giving Larry only a tiny amount, he made the decision to keep the discovery to himself and not tell Frank. For the time being, Larry decided to disregard Frank's dishonesty and instead used some of the money to purchase food at the store. He was in such a good mood that he hummed quietly to himself. A woman in her sixties was sobbing uncontrollably as he drew close the bench next to his recreational vehicle. She was trying to collect herself as she wiped away her tears with a handkerchief. Are you okay? Ma'am, would you like me to assist in any way? Larry inquired in an anxious tone. In shock. The woman raised her eyes to study the homeless guy standing before her. Larry tried to hide his lifestyle by always wearing clean clothes and taking care of his looks. But it was obvious. I appreciate that. But I really doubt you can be of much assistance to me. I lost all my savings when my son's wife carelessly tossed aside something extremely important. As the woman's voice betrayed her anguish, she lamented the loss of all her money and wealth. Hearing her confession, Larry felt a twinge of discomfort. Are you referring to a TV set? he inquired. Even though he had a clue as to what had transpired. Possibly one from 1980. Or even earlier, how did you know? Indeed, are you familiar with it in any way? What's wrong? The woman questioned. Her eyes temporarily averted. Larry broke the news of his discovery to her with a heavy heart. I still haven't spent a dime of that money. Madam. We should leave. I will give you every penny back. Just a hundred yards away is where my RV is. It was clear that the woman was relieved. Eventually, Larry found out that Miranda Simpson was the rightful owner of the hidden treasure in the old television. On Main Street, she resided with her son and his young bride. After the terrible death of her husband in a vehicle accident 15 years ago, Miranda refused to let another man into her life. Since Larry had been through something similar in his own life, he had a good feeling about the tension in Miranda's connection with her family. Larry felt completely at ease in Miranda's company as they spoke, despite her numerous struggles. With a heavy heart, he relinquished the bundle, his shame mounting when he had almost robbed this generous woman of her life savings. Miranda surprised him by offering him a stack of hundred-dollar dollars she had removed from the wallet. Here. Please. Thank you so much for all of your assistance. It was Larry's initial reaction to turn down the offer and send the money back. Still. He just nodded in agreement when he met Miranda's gaze. So. 
It was fate that befell Larry. Since he had so unexpectedly discovered a gem in the ancient TV, Larry went back to his trailer after saying goodbye to Miranda and thought about how much he missed seeing her. Larry was back to work fixing machines and collecting recyclables after a week. A gentle tap on his RV door startled him one day. Sure. Who could it be, a little irritated? Larry mumbled something. Surprised. He opened the door to see Miranda Simpson standing there holding a plastic bag. Larry. Here is this. It's meant for you. I baked it myself. Miranda remarked. Her voice betraying a tinge of nervousness and shame. That smells absolutely mouth-watering, a long smell brought a smile to Larry's face. And he let out an exclamation. Three pies. Chicken. Apple and lemon. And a bottle of handmade lemonade were inside the bag. It had been a long time since Larry had such a delicious lunch. Seated next to him, Miranda watched with sincere worry as he greedily devoured his food. After Larry had done eating, Miranda proceeded to explain her purpose for being there. Tell me what to do. You appear to be well-versed and informed to end our cohabitation. My son plans to sell my house and use the money to buy something more affordable. In your opinion, what is the matter? Miranda inquired. Her face red from being too open. Larry experienced a twinge of deja vu as he thought back to a time when things had been similar. I would suggest against selling your residence. I was in a similar scenario ten years ago. Less than three months after the funeral, my daughter and her fiancé chose to sell our house following my wife Rachel's cancerous death. I'm not sure who came up with the notion. But a month later I found myself homeless. Larry said. Regretfully. I found this trailer and have been living in it ever since. Miranda stood up for her son right away. He would not force me to live on the streets. Larry gave Miranda a gentle shake of his head and cautioned her against making snap decisions. It was evident from her expression that she wasn't happy with his advice. When Miranda saw the talk was not going well, she attempted to hide her sadness, bid farewell in a polite manner, and walked out wearing a fake grin. Larry clearly regretted the way he treated her. The old man wanted to apologize to Miranda for his harsh remarks. But he knew that Miranda would have to validate or refute her own worries totally. The following day, Miranda did not pay Larry a visit. Much to his great regret, she was absent for a week. Or perhaps longer. Larry hurried to answer the door every time someone knocked. Thinking it would be Miranda. Miranda did show up. But she had a big suitcase with her when he finally came to terms with the fact that their relationship appeared to be over. Larry looked shocked. Will you allow me to stay the night? Or should I find a bench to sleep on, Miranda stated. I'm homeless now. Omitting the customary hellos. In the end, Larry's earlier guess proved to be correct. Miranda's son had evicted her and advised her to check into a homeless shelter due to pressure from his wife. That's regrettable. But don't worry. We'll find a solution. Please make yourself at home. Larry said kindly. The way Miranda responded surprised me. Though I really just need to stay for one night. I'd want to extend an invitation to you to migrate to Kentucky. There. I have an old house that belonged to my grandma. Not even my son and daughter-in-law are aware of it. Though not a mansion. It's still preferable to an RV. Now. What say you, will you accompany me to Kentucky? Miranda questioned. Gathering her bravery. Larry started to get teary-eyed. 
just to be close to Miranda. He would follow her wherever. After he agreed to her proposition, Larry stopped feeling alone. Rather, he obtained the joy he had long desired. Following their relocation to Kentucky, Miranda and Larry started a family. They talk often about how their now beautiful romance started with that old TV stash. After watching the stories above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel. That all about today's stories. See you next time.